Today we have another Hometown Historian Channel production. Enjoy. So hello once again, this is Jonathan Miller with the Hometown Historian Channel. Uh, today we're actually doing a video on the Roebling's Delaware Aqueduct, or also known as the Roebling Bridge. Uh, these first group of pictures are thanks to uh, Colleen of Colleen Unvarnished. She actually put this together with uh, the Zane Gray pictures that she had done for us for the Zane Gray, Zane Gray Homestead and Lack of Wax and uh, Pennsylvania and this is uh, I believe the Delaware River <coughs> this, this bridge actually is right near Zane Gray's homestead it's like right there but you know both are in lack of wax and and uh, this is the oldest existing wire suspension bridge in the United States uh, it's also the oldest uh, engineering work of John Roebling that's still in existence. He did do uh, several bridges earlier than that, but this is the one that is the oldest existing. Uh, it actually crosses over the Delaware River. It's about 535 feet or 175 meters from Minnesink, Ford, uh, New York to Lackawax in Pennsylvania. It opened in 1849 as an aqueduct, actually, uh, connecting two parts of the Delaware and Hudson Canal, or the DNH, and since then it has been converted to carry uh, cars and pedestrians. So this is one of those, uh, once again, suspension bridge. It's sort of like you see the Brooklyn Bridge, which we'll talk about a little later in this video having to deal with John Roebling and you know bridges like that where they had the suspension cables uh, this was sort of a new idea and it was something that he pioneered and uh, is very well very well known for so the bridge construction actually began in 1847 it was one of a, uh, four actual suspension aqueducts on a DNH canal uh, which was a system of transportation that was connecting the coal fields of northeastern Pennsylvania with the markets on the Hudson River. Uh, the canal opened in 1828, was enlarged after the 1840s, and closed in 1898. Uh, Russell F. Lord and John A. Roebling, who we talked about, designed the bridge and supervised its construction. So sort of weirdly, two of the important local industries who sort of had conflicting needs brought about the construction of Roebling's Delaware and Lack of Lack Wax and Aqueducts, because there's actually two right there, uh, canal traffic and timber rafting. Uh, since the mid-18th century, timber from the Delaware Valley had been floated down the river to shipyards and industries in Trenton and Philadelphia. Uh, the D&H's canal rope ferry crossing of the Delaware at the Lack of Wax and created a bottleneck and there was numerous collisions with the timber rafts headed downstream. In 1846, to alleviate both problems, the DNH Canal Company approved Russell F. Lord's plan to substitute two new aqueducts in place of the rope ferry. Uh, after evaluating several options, Lord recommended designs submitted by John A. Roebling, who had already built a wire suspension aqueduct at Pittsburgh in 1845. Uh, to raise the canal enough to allow the passage of ice flows and river traffic, Lord's plan called for three locks to be built on the eastern side. It was an immediate success, the Delaware Aqueduct, which cost $41,750, and the Lackawaxen Aqueduct, which cost $18,650, and of which only the abutments remain, uh, reduced canal tra travel time by one full day. 
saving thousands of dollars annually and also you know like previous mentioned the problem of the bottlenecking and the accidents that had happened over and over again those were now uh, rectified and taken care of so let's talk a little bit more about john uh, augustus uh, roebling and we had a picture of him early uh, he was uh, german born uh, in 1806 uh, he actually went to a school over in, uh, I believe, Berlin and started learning architecture and those types of things. And then eventually he and his brother uh, wound out deciding to come over with another older friend who was also into engineering and decided to come to America because they felt it was an engineering utopia. They were open to all kinds of new ideas and they were sort of experimenting, like I said, with this suspension bridge uh, technology. It was one of those things that it was, you know, anything new like that, it was sort of like, oh, this is new, this is magic, this is weird. But the engineering behind it was brilliant. And, and this bridge is, if you look, you can vaguely see right there, you can see the uh, suspension bridge, the, the wires there that he made, where they sort of tied everything together. Uh, it was very, very unique, uh, and this one isn't what you think. When you look at the Brooklyn Bridge, you see these big ones hanging down, and you can see all that visually. These ones are semi-hidden sort of underneath the bridge, uh, but they work really, really, really well, and they they had a good uh, good history to them. It's like that, and, and like I said with Roebling, he was a brilliant guy. Now, when they came over, they decided that they him and his brother, they bought— it was like 1,400 or 1,500 acres, and they wanted to, their original plan was to build a town called Saxonburg, which is there, and uh, his house, the John Roebling House, is actually on the National Register of Historic Places, but then the panic of uh, 1930 or 1837 happened and sort of really ran everybody's financial plans and the plans in general aground, so he decided to go back to engineering. So he had a number of different projects that he was involved with, um, and a lot of this is suspension bridges, and a number of them are no longer around. Like we said, this bridge here uh, is the oldest example, existing example of his work. He wound out uh, designing this Brooklyn Bridge, and now unfortunately he never got to see its, I believe, its start obviously not its completion, he died way too soon, but his son, Washington Roebling, took over. What happened to John Roebling is, I guess, where they were going to have this site for the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, a boat came in and smashed his toes, and they all had to be amputated. And he did something called, like, water therapy, where you continued to pour water over the wound because he didn't want to have anything done after that. Well, ultimately... I would assume he developed like sepsis or something of that nature and it killed him basically like 22 days later. Well, his son Washington Roebling wound up taking over the project then and he ran it, but they, what they did is to put these, uh, uh, the areas that went down into the river, the towers, they had to put these caissons underneath the water to dig down to get to bedrock so they had a place to actually set this on for the bridge so it would be stable. Unfortunately, when the guys did that, sort of like with diving, if you come up too quickly, it winds up messing you up. And they, they called it the bends, and Washington Roebling wound up getting that. And it just, he was no longer capable of being on the work site. And his wife, Emily, actually took over the project and finished it. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, but that's what John Roebling is, is best known for. But he was the early pioneer in the suspension uh, bridge technology and uh, was a brilliant man. And it's, uh, this bridge stands today. Uh, there's a great place to go and visit and check out in Lackawaxen, Pennsylvania. And remember this guy, and there is also a town, Saxonburg, uh, Pennsylvania, where his home is, where he lived. And that's on the National Registry of Historic Places and is preserved, but just a cool place to go. And if you do go to see this bridge, um, also keep in mind it's Zane Gray's, Zane Gray's Homestead. And I believe there's a museum there and everything mm -hmm. that you can go and check out as well. So you can, it's another one of those places that 
you can go check out and make a day trip of it and just check out some cool history and and this is definitely a cool engineering marvel that you can check out oldest suspension bridge existing suspension bridge in the united states so as always i want to say thank you for coming along and we will see you all about town